Got an AM KBDT proudly presents Life Solutions, Coaching, Counseling, Naturopathic Medicine, Insights for Successful Living, and Getting Better with Ann Beal. Welcome to Getting Better with Ann Beal. I am Ann Beal, and I'm here today with Red Robinson. He is 97 years old, and today is his birthday, and he is a World War II veteran and a Pearl Harbor survivor. We wanted to meet with him today, not only to celebrate his birthday, but to hear his story all about his life. And also, since the show is getting better, we want him to give us tips on what he believes has helped him live as long as he has and done as well as he has. And we are here today in his place. We are just glad to be here. Thank you for being on, Red. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I know it's been uh, a while. We got here earlier trying to get everything set up, and it took a little while. So I don't know if I tired you out. How are oh, you doing? No. I'm doing great. <laughs> You're doing great. So tell us, tell us where you told me you were born in Nebraska. Yes. Then you eventually moved to where? Lots of different places? Lots of different places. <laughs> All over. Wyoming, uh, Alaska. I lived in Alaska for 30 years. And then when did you go into the military? 1940. Well, you were out of high school, right? Out you out would have had to be school. an adult. Were yeah. you in college? No, off of the farm, and away I went. Did you get drafted? No, no, I no. enlisted. You enlisted? Yes, I did. So you wanted to go. How come? I always wanted to. The military was very exciting. It was. Very it still exciting. is. <laughs> it's, I think so. So you went in in 1940. Mm-hmm. And when were you born? 1922. See, so you remembered that. 19, I'm like... January 12th, 1922. January 12th. <laughs> and you went in to the Army and you were stationed in Hawaii. Were you stationed there the whole time? Pretty much. So where were you the day of Pearl Harbor? I was in uh, Hawaii. Right. What? <laughs> Schofield. Schofield. Schofield Army Base. Schofield Barracks. And my dad, my dad was there, but not during that time, but oh. the Army Barracks. Uh-huh. And uh, what were you doing the day that it got bombed? Uh, I see it was on a Sunday, so we were just goofing off. We didn't have, it was our own time, so that, that was it. And that particular day, we hadn't doing, we wasn't doing anything exciting, nothing to do. <laughs> so you were just goofing off. Well, yeah, because you weren't expecting anything. No, no. So did you just hear the planes coming or yes. hear the bombs? I heard the planes coming in, too. Just share with me about that day. Well... If I could get my 97-year memory going. <laughs> That's okay. You just take your time. It's amazing to have to think about what was going on. Actually, we were just goofing off. Nothing exciting. Then we heard the planes come over. And then then we saw the red red ball on the planes. And then we knew that that was, that was, that was bad news. Because you knew it was Japanese. Yeah, yeah, the red ball on the plane. So what did you guys do? Because I don't think I've heard a lot about what the Army did there. Uh, well, they called us in, and we had to get our full field packs all ready. Made all that noise. It was the heater. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come over, ask some questions? I know that you were interested as well. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. Red, now we met... Just a little bit earlier today, but when we were setting everything up, and and I'm a vet, you're a vet. I was mentioning that when I meet a vet, I I feel a connection with them, you know, because we've gone through some of the same things together. We had our training, we had uh, the the work that we did, whatever it was, and and uh, you you at least when you were at Pearl Harbor, you you were in a non-combat kind of situation. And my veteran time was the same way, non-combat. Later you got into combat because I saw your battles over here and I read things like uh, Arden, which is, that would be Battle of the Bulge, I'm thinking, which is a huge thing in the history of, of U.S. Yes. military, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and then you were at, you were also at D-Day, uh, when, when we landed at Normandy, I saw the Normandy uh, medal there. And uh, so you've seen a wide variety of military experience, haven't you? Certainly have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been a great life. And I've been fortunate enough to have made it. <laughs> well, and isn't that the truth? That's really, really true. And yeah. uh, so, I mean, there, when I think back of, first of all, the combat situations you've been in, 
it's a, it's miraculous that anybody survived those things, exactly. those specific uh, uh, combat situations, and uh, and so. But then, in, even beyond that, you know, you had another life that was an exciting life. You you were a pilot. You flew pipers. You you uh, you had aircraft that had the skis and the pontoons. So you were on snow and water and all oh, that. Yeah. So you know, you're you're we're kind of celebrating your your veterans experience today along with your birthday because when we first found found out about you through the media and everything uh we were amazed about your your uh your World War II experience and the fact that honestly you were still with us. Yes. And so we wanted to come and meet you and and get you on camera and everything and uh but beyond that there are some other things that have happened to you. Um, do you remember where you went? Uh, and, and again, I understand even even if you you weren't in your nineties, uh, sometimes memories fade. You know, from way back when it's been decades. And so, but I was wondering, you know, where you where you were sent from Pearl Harbor when you you actually did move out from there. Do you remember where you went with your unit? Oh, I think the next day for. Uh, across the English Channel to Normandy Beach. I was going to say, that happened pretty quick right after that, right? And I rode, I had good transportation. I rode on the Queen Mary. <laughs> You're kidding me. That is so cool. <laughs> I'd say you went in style, Red. <laughs> you know? And so that's, that's, that's so funny because you weren't on a troop ship then. No. Uh, and, you know, so uh, do you actually remember, do you remember hitting the beach? Oh, yeah. What was yeah. that like? What was that like? I remember because we were about a hundred, hundred yards or more to the beach. Yeah. So <laughs> the water was uh, like maybe up to your chest or something at yeah. first, and then you yeah. waded up up to the beach, and you were just slogging along. I oh, guess yeah. at that point, you know, yeah. did you feel like uh, were you? Did you have a sense when that happened? Did you have a sense that you were a, like a sitting duck or anything or not or uh, what was uh, what was that like? No, at that. I don't think at that age you, you worry about anything. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> so at that point, you were you just had a sense of doing your job. Yeah, you were just doing your job. You're telling right. us what to do, and we're and, doing and it. That, well, and 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 that's uh, that's how success happens is when you're yeah. in a situation like that, you know, and follow and, the leader. Right, right. Yeah. And so um, that was, and I, I, you know, from from there, uh, I don't know if you had a sense of. Uh, you know when the when the shooting stopped, do you, uh, what happened then or not? Or did you were you part beyond just the beach itself? Were you in, a part of an invade of an invasion force? Oh no. Okay. We're right on the beach. Okay. We didn't do anything really. Okay. So later on, as time went by, the next few days, they probably got you guys together, and then you they took you to wherever it was that you were supposed to go. Right? Yes. So you don't remember. Um, do you remember fighting the Japanese at, at that point? Oh, I remember. Or, I'm sorry, the Germans, prepared. not not the Japanese, but the oh. Germans. Uh, wrong the war, Germans. wrong battle, wrong <laughs> battle. Uh, but 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 you know, we hear and we see a lot of uh, memorabilia that tells us that uh, the Germans had high ground and they were shooting down at our troops that were hitting the beach. And I didn't know if you were in a situation like that or not. Not no. Okay. Not, not really. Okay. No. You were part of the the, the invasion force. That was to secure that beach. Exactly. Okay. okay. And we stayed on that beach. Okay. And that that was one of the questions I had. Yeah. Where did you go from there? Well, you stayed there. You stayed yeah. there so that you could secure the beach. Exactly. And, and so that was a, a huge part of, I don't know, June 6th, I always think, when June 6th hits, I always think, this is D-Day. This is when it happened. Oh. This is when we, this is when we started taking back what it looked like had been taken from us, yeah. you know, and, and everything. And so I, I remember that. Um, there's another, something else that I don't know how you feel about this, but uh, I think there are generations that have come up lately that um, they really don't know about Pearl Harbor. And I was a ch at a checkout stand a few years back, and um, I said I was writing a, a check, and this is a, a ways back, but I was writing a check, and, and it was uh, uh, December 7th, and I, was writing, I said, hey, this is Pearl Harbor Day. And the checkout girl said, what? You're the you're the second person who said that. What is Pearl Harbor? Day? I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, how can you not know what that is, you know? And yet, um, time moves on, and sometimes even the most important 
pieces of history almost are lost back there. How come they don't teach that in school? Well, Isn't that amazing. It, it is incredibly amazing, and it's a tragedy. Yeah, it's a tragedy that that kids growing up today don't know their, well, their yeah, history. They say, you know? It's an easy life, <laughs> right? And the reason it's easy is because guys like you hit the Normandy Beach, right? Yeah, exactly. Look at that part of your life yeah. a little bit, you know. So, you you actually were in a number of really critical combat situations later, and I'll just let that go with saying that. Um, some of the most memorable battles you were a part of. Yeah. And you survived, and that's we talked about that even being a miracle, you know, that you survived the battles. So let's just say, okay, we're at, we're at the end of the war. Uh, the Nazis and the Japanese have surrendered. Uh, it's August 1945, uh, and so the war's over. Yeah. What happened to you? 1940 to 45 were bad years. <laughs> yeah, they were really bad years. But in towards you know the the um, fall of 1945 and uh, on in there when the war was over, things began to began to change a little bit. How did things change for you when the war ended, Red? Let me ask you: Did you did you stay in the army for a while? Do you remember, no. or did you well, get I, out pretty I quick? I bailed out as soon as I could. <laughs> <laughs> smart man, <laughs> you're a smart man. Because <laughs> I was in the service from 1940 to 45. Right, and yeah. so um, can you can you remember back? Uh, you were still young at that point, of course. Oh yeah. And so, did you go out and try to look for a job, or did you say, "I'm just going to kick back for a while and travel a bit, or something"? Oh, no, and all no. that money you made in the army. <laughs> oh yeah, that uh, nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents a month. <laughs> I, I know. Is that what it was? Nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents. You remember wow. that? Wow. Well, that's pretty hard to forget. It's hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it really is. Now, I know that later on, uh, you you were telling us you owned that hardware store up in Fair, uh, Fairbanks? Yeah. Alaska. Alaska. Right. Oh, no. But there was some, was there some time between the time that you were at, getting out of the Army and the war was over, uh, between then and the time that you opened the hardware store in, in Fairbanks? What what happened in between there? When, and I know you got married. Uh, at least, I'm pretty sure you did. Did you, you get married yeah. before you went to Alaska? I don't remember. Okay. No, I think before, because we went to Alaska together. Okay. Because we, we bought a brand new 19, a new Ford convertible and drove it to Alaska. Oh, wow. Yay. Would that be fun or what? <laughs> Whew, yes, sir. On a road, on a, the road to Alaska had just been made, and we were one of the first passengers over that road. <laughs> Isn't that something that was that was that the Alcan Highway? Yeah. Is that what they call that? That's what I thought. That was the highway. That's, oh, how, yeah. that's how you got there if you went oh. by land, right? And so, yeah. okay, you're you're no, uh, so, so yeah. Alaska. It Fairbanks is in what part of Alaska? Is it down near like uh, Juneau or no? It's up north. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> You have to talk. You're talking to a Texan and you're <laughs> up north Alaska. All we know is that it's supposed to be cold. Really yeah. cold. We know more than that. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah. And so what made you open a hardware store? Well, I didn't actually open it. They opened it. Now, later on, I took over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You went up there to work with or we yeah. worked with them. Oh, we had a good life. Oh, that was so much fun up there. That's great. What was flying, fun? Flying in pontoons and we... In the winter time on skis. Oh, mm -hmm. we had a great time. Wow, <laughs> sounds, sounds pretty nice. Sounds great. So you, you had to learn to fly over again when you're on skis because there's no brakes. You know. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Well, so uh, who's you? So did you rent the airplane when you oh, flew yeah. it? Or yeah. So you rented Air Banks Air Service. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you rented the planes and uh, just had a blast flying them around. Yeah. Sounds great. Sounds wonderful. I was wondering what made you want to go to Alaska in the first place. Oh. I always wanted to go to Alaska. Really? Fishing. Okay. Fishing. Because you're a, you're a fisherman. I know that. Yeah. I see. Because okay. Alaska, not that many people had been up, you know, and I, I don't know. No. It was newer. It was pretty new. Oh, it was brand new. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Alaska, the Alcan Highway. That was in, what, 1940, 45? Hmm. I'm not that familiar with that, so I'm I don't know, either. but I, I, I do know that for, for a while that was the only land route to get up there.
Wellness is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to lifesolutionscoachingandcounseling.com or email them at lifesolutionscc at yahoo.com. Call Cody and Sons Plumbing for life's unforeseen events. For 50 years, Cody has met the plumbing, heating, and air conditioning needs of businesses and homeowners across the Metroplex. Did you just turn on your furnace and did it go... Call Cody at 972-870-9444. Better yet, call them today for a preseason checkup and cleaning to prevent those problems. Want to save money with a tankless water heater? Call Cody at 972-870-9444. From garbage disposal installation to full bath remodels, the experienced folks at Cody & Sons are your plumbing, heating, and air problem solvers. Ask the experts about their MVP programs and easy financing, too. Call Cody at 972-870-9444. Go online to CodyAndSons.com. That's CodyAndSons.com. Or call today at 972-870-9444. Keep this number for gas leaks and other emergencies. 972-870-9444. Cody and Sons Plumbing. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS and you cannot afford to make payments to the IRS, you may qualify for the CNC tax program. This is a new program, and if you qualify, you won't make any payments to the IRS while in this program. Once you're accepted into this program, the IRS is forced to stop all harassing collection activities. No threatening phone calls, no wage garnishments, no bank levies, and no more monthly payments to the IRS. Get ready to write this number down. It's the most important number you'll ever need to end your IRS tax nightmare. Call Paramount Tax Relief at 800-547-4804 for a free confidential consultation to find out if you qualify for the CNC tax program. Once you are accepted into the CNC tax program, you won't make any payments to the IRS while in this program. Call Paramount Tax Relief now at 800-547-4804. That's 800-547-4804. Again, 800-547-4804. Were you scammed into signing a timeshare contract? And did you miss the part that said you have to pay for your great idea? Not only for the rest of your life, but when you're not here anymore, you get to pass this turkey onto your family for them to pay for the rest of their lives. Thanks, Dad. Don't burden your family down the road, and don't be stuck with expensive timeshare payments forever. Get out of your bad idea, timeshare contract, guaranteed, or pay nothing. Call Resort Release today and learn for free how their timeshare Share Exit team can help you legally exit your timeshare contract. They've helped thousands of people, and they're A-plus rated with a BBB. So if you feel scammed, get mad, and get out of your expensive timeshare contract right now, guaranteed. Call N-O-W. 800-455-7967. 800-455-7967. 800-455-7967. That's 800-455-7967. What does Meals on Wheels do? They deliver meals and smiles to homebound seniors. But Meals on Wheels does something else. They turn a volunteer's lunch break into a meaningful experience. As small and as simple as the relationship is between a volunteer and a client of Meals on Wheels, it's really so impactful. I never thought that five minutes could make so much difference in the lives of two people, but it has. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. That's americaletsdolunch.org. Brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. This is a national health alert from the Healthcare Hotline. Are you on Medicare and or have private insurance and suffer from back pain? MD Topical has a solution for you. Today, you can qualify to receive a pain relieving treatment, such as a comfortable back brace or a customized pain treatment at little or no cost. Call MD Topical toll free now, 888 998 7225. It just takes a couple of minutes to qualify for these amazing treatments that have helped thousands of people with severe pain. Your personalized pain treatment will be delivered directly to your door. Call MD Topical toll-free, 888-998-7225, 888-998-7225, or go to mdtopical.com and get started on your road to a pain-free life. Call MD Topical toll-free, 888-998-7225, or go to mdtopical.com
Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. That's 800-610-5739. I love to admit it's getting better. If you'd like to get better, call Ann right now. 214-810-8255. 214-810-TALK. Now more with Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back to Getting Better with Ann Beal. We are here with Red Robinson talking about his 97-year-old life. He's a World War II veteran, Pearl Harbor survivor. Red, I'm behind the camera right now. I'm trying to finish up the yeah, me videotape too. right now. <laughs> and, and you're not on there, though, but we can get you on there. No, but I want to just ask him. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we were going to ask you about jumping out of airplanes. We heard you did. I certainly did. Skydiving <laughs> is the most fun my goodness. When did you do that? A couple of years ago. Oh, my goodness. Did yeah. anyone do it with you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they had... I was strapped on to this one person, and we bailed out at 10,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and was it exciting? Oh, boy, it was great. <laughs> it's a little adrenaline rush there, man, huh? <laughs> yeah, so you loved that. Oh, it was great. That sounds wonderful. I encourage yeah. all you guys to do that. Everyone. Yeah, Don't you think light. people... Landing people's... is so easy. And we just get it along the ground and, oh, it's fun. Wow. <laughs> George H.W. Bush did it. Yeah, George H.W. Bush did it. Yeah. Did you know that too? Yeah. Well, there you go, Ann. You That's know, wonderful. For us. I know. We need to go do that. Now, Thank right? you, Red. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun.
balance of Pat Wheeler. Are you buying or selling real estate in today's market that is whiskey hot? Then call a pro, James Christie of Keller Williams. Just call him Realtor Jim. Realtor Jim will take care of business, your business. He's a tall Texan, polite and efficient as Jordan Spieth. Realtor Jim helped me find a condo in Dallas that I still love today, two years later. Call Realtor Jim at 972-365-4401. Call Realtor Jim today and be happy you did. That's 972-367-4401. Dick, Dick, Dick. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Why? Because you can save 45% on packages compared to your high-priced cable bill. Wow. Take those giant scissors out and cut the cable and save with Dish TV. Plus, you get a free DVR upgrade to record your favorite shows and free installation. And with Dish Anywhere, you can watch TV for free on your mobile device. Act fast. You can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company do that for you? I don't think so. Get all the best TV programming at your fingertips at a fraction of the price of cable TV. So say adios, arrivederci, goodbye to the high cable bill, and save up to 45% on Dish TV packages today. These are limited time offers and can change at any time. Call fast. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. That's 800-610-5739. The Northwest Sun is the new online news source that covers all of Northwest Tarrant County. The Northwest Sun is the online source for local news, events, job postings, and stories that matter to you. The Northwest Sun, serving the people of Northwest Tarrant County. Log on to thenwsun.com or just click the link on your streaming player to visit the Northwest Sun website. If you live, work, or play in Northwest Tarrant County, you want to bookmark the nwsun.com to keep up with your community. The Northwest Sun. Because news happens every day. I have to admit, it's getting better. It's a little better all the time. You're getting better all the time. Now, back to Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back to Getting Better with Ann Beal. We are here with Red Robinson talking about his 97-year-old life. He's a World War II veteran, Pearl Harbor survivor, and we've gone through a lot of his life so far. And when we ended for the break, we are in Alaska with his hardware company. So um, Dr. Jim Slaughter is helping us Hi, today. Everybody. It's good to be back with you. Yep. And, and, you know, let me just say, I, I, it is a, such a, a treat. It's really a treat for me, Red, to get here, sit here, and talk with you about this. Oh, I, it brings back a lot of good memories. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that it brings back the good ones and not the bad ones. Because you know? the Alcan Highway, when they were working on that many years ago, and then we were one of the first passengers over it. Isn't that something? Because we had to stay in Quonset huts that the workers used. <laughs> and Quonset, Quonset huts are those metal kind of uh, rounded, uh, long rounded buildings that uh, yeah. that the military originally came up with that were cheap and easy to, to make. Yeah, and, I, I just keep thinking we all knew what a Quonset hut was because <laughs> that's all we had back then. <laughs> right, right. And did, did you know, though, that it was named after a military uh, officer named Quonset? Did you know that? And he's the one who projected this. We should we should try building these. And, and they did, and it ended up being cheap, and, and they could do it quickly, and, and the military used them everywhere. And he made a fortune. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> <'cause> they, <laughs> that's right. They were all over the place. <laughs> And uh, you're right, and uh, and then beyond that, then uh, uh, they were used commercially, not oh, just yeah. for military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but you guys were, stayed in one of those. They were pretty good buildings, though, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah. They look cold when you see them from the outside, but I'm sure that they warmed up oh, real well. You know? Oh, they did. They because we had nice heat in there. They were, they were perfect. All right, all right. When you went up to Alaska. You and your wife drove up there on the Alcan Highway and, and, and were up there. Did you stay up there for a long, long time, or did you come back and then go back? Or Do you remember about we, that? No, I, we stayed there. Stayed there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We stayed there. We loved it. Loved it. Yeah. It, well. was, it was beautiful. And the weather, oh, in the summertime, it was, it was gorgeous. Really? Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Probably. So did you catch... Um, Salmon, when you fished? Oh, sure. 
Yeah, because yeah. that's like the biggest thing. Yeah. So what was your favorite thing to do up there? Besides fly. I know that was your favorite, right? Fly. <laughs> yeah, flying. And, and, oh, and then we fished. Mm -hmm. A lot of fishing. Well, that's about all there was to do, you know, really. Okay. Have you ever been a hunter? Uh, a a hunt, hunter? No, no. I no. never did. I just wondered. I just wondered. No. Okay. I never did care much for hunting. Yeah. But okay. did you see polar bear? No. Oh, good. Because we were inland from there, you yes. know. Okay, right. Yeah, okay. Okay. So my granddad actually lived in Alaska, him and his wife. Oh. For a long time, and um, they were in, they were, I guess you can call it more s city area civilization, you know, and they didn't mm -hmm. see polar bears either. But by watching TV, you'd think there's polar bears wandering around Alaska <laughs> all the time. <laughs> you no, would. They're pretty scarce. Yeah, that's good to know. Maybe if you went further north, you know, up north near the poles, maybe they'd be up there. Yeah, more. I don't on know, the coast. No, on the coast, right? Oh, we were coast. inland. Yeah, see? yeah. That's why. Inland. Yeah. So when we go to Alaska, we go inland. Well, I'm beginning to think maybe we need to go to Alaska. If you liked it that much, we probably need to go check it out, you know? Oh, it was a one. We had a wonderful time, yeah. Was that your favorite place to live? Oh, at that time, yes. Oh, yes. gosh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we did everything we wanted to. We flew and fished and mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. had a good job. <laughs> so you joined, uh, you, you began working for the, uh, um, the hardware, was it? Uh, Samson. Hardware. Samson hardware, hardware. The hardware company there. Later on. Uh, earlier in Alaska, I worked on the uh, labor force with this guy that later... Owned a Samson Hardware. Oh, okay, okay. And that's how I got connected with. That. I got you. Okay, <laughs> okay. Before we before we finish today, and I know we have a little more time left, but I I would really like you to think about um, and tell us about some of the the things that you've seen during your lifetime, things that you've seen come along that were kind of astounding. I mean, you've seen new things, happen. inventions, inventions that people have come up with. Uh, way of life has changed, you know, through the decades, you know, and I was just, you know, I was one of the things I wanted to ask was what were some of the, the biggest changes that you have seen in your lifetime, you know? Well, I'd have to think about that. Okay. I, My grandmother would tell me that, like, she was born in 1908. And she talked about electricity coming and airplanes, automobiles, automobiles, oh, yeah. and, oh mm -hmm. and uh, the vacuum cleaner. Uh -huh. Um, and uh, telephone, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and so, if you think of now how fast things have been invented, for you, what are things that you remember that have come in since you were born? The internet and computers, I know that, but... I think flying was the most interesting thing for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way... Yeah. Airplanes, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh Thanks. my gosh. So you are, have been amazed about all the changes in, in the way airplanes have come forward? Yeah. The travel, traveling now, mm. there's nothing <laughs> right compared to what was years ago. And you love to travel? Yeah, by air especially. Right. <laughs> by air. Right. Now, when did, do you remember when the Concorde first came out? The transatlantic uh, jet, um, no, but I, I can recall that happening, but I don't. Uh, they they said that it was it travels to Europe in like two hours some, or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and for you, what are your greatest memories over the last ninety seven years? What are the things that you, when you look at your life, that you have really been thankful for? Probably traveling. Mm -hmm. So I assume your wife has passed away already. Mm -hmm. When did she die? Uh, right, ten years ago. Really? She oh, lived a God. long life. Wow. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then how many... Go ahead. We had a good life together for many years. But, yep. When did you get to Texas? Hmm. When did I get to Texas? I don't remember. When did I get to Texas? About 
could have been about 20, about 20, 20 something years ago. So that was Sandra. Sandra's his caretaker, and she yeah. she uh, checks on him all the time. Yeah. She told me that you're doing. You said you're doing so well because she takes good care of you. That's right. Is it she feeds you really well and all that? She makes sure you're taken care of. Yes. Um, yeah, she does a wonderful job. Wonderful. And we thank you, Sandra, for that. Yeah. For sure. And so you've been here twenty something years. So what do you think of Texas? Compared to Alaska. <laughs> oh, not much comparison. <laughs> no, no, I know. I was going to say, I don't so, know. Alaska's so beautiful. Hey, we had a wonderful life in Alaska. Oh, yeah. We sure did. You should see him light up when he talks about Alaska. Yeah. Because they're watching right now. Yeah. You know, doing yeah. that, so, yeah. The, the summers especially were beautiful. Huh? Mm. In the wintertime, though, just Put the skis on. <laughs> put, put on a coat and mittens and a warm hat or something. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. What do you think are some of the things that have helped you live so long, Red? Can you tell us? Because being 97, you know that a lot of people now don't even live past their 60s. Younger women, older whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. I didn't say that. You've been asked this question before, right? <laughs> 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 There you go. Yep. Anything else? Oh, it's a good life. Though. No, I, I've really enjoyed it. Too. Have now? Do you get exercise? Do you get out and walk or anything like that? Oh, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are good things. How yeah. about what? What? What do you eat? Well, like, what kind of food do you eat? Because you know you're 97, so people would want to know. Like, you know, just regular eating, don't I? Yeah. Regular what? eating would okay. that be? Arby's. Arby's. <laughs> she loves, he loves Arby's. Yeah. Hey, have you have you tried that great big barbecue sandwich that they have now there? I don't know if you like that kind no, of thing. I have no teeth to watch. Okay. No okay. teeth. Well, he didn't want that. There you go. So, what uh, do you eat at Arby's? Uh, Reuben. Ooh, Reuben sandwich. Reuben's. Oh, yay. My favorite. They, oh, my they have good Reuben's there. I've oh, had that too. That's I really, like a Reuben. Good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Red lives in Paradise, Texas, and that's where we are today. And out in the country here, it's really, really pretty uh, mm -hmm. and quiet. We saw a hawk on the way here. Um, it was yeah, just really pretty. Came off a mailbox and spread its wings and flew up into the tree, and it was a beautiful bird. Right oh, by our car, really bird. pretty. <laughs> we have hawks where we are, and a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of wildlife. Deer roam through our yard mm -hmm. and stuff. Good. It's really pretty. We love it out here. Good in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah. Now, do you drink the Paradise Dairy milk that they have here in Paradise? No. I don't drink milk. You don't drink milk. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you you eat Arby's. You eat regular food. You do get exercise. You just go walk. Yep. And you don't take naps. You told me you don't take naps. No. Mm -mm. No nap. And so, what time do you get up? Oh, it varies sometimes from 4 o'clock on. From 4 a.m. See, a lot of, lot of 90-year-olds get up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, so when uh, do you go to bed? Uh, early. Early. Seven. Seven. Thirty. Seven thirty. Yes. Okay, guys. He has more time during the day than we do, right? So he gets up at like four in the morning or so, six, four, four, and he goes to bed at seven. So, yeah. you know, most of the people out there that are younger, they get up about what? So let's say they're working, they get up at six and six, they six -ish, yeah. go to bed at like at ten. Probably. Right, probably. <laughs> and Mr. Red Robinson has beaten you guys, but uh, so you do. You do a lot during the day. So, what is your hobbies now? Do you do things to keep you busy? Yeah, well, it's a hard time now. I love to fly so much. I hated that when like that ended. <laughs> Having to give that up was hard. Yeah, for the eyesight. Your you know, eyesight. Yeah. So Sandra said that you love poker. No, oh, I do. <laughs> Look at that. He loves poker. Where do you play poker? The crew gets together uh, on Thursdays and Sundays, twice a week. Really? All yeah. Right. All right. Is that here in Paradise? Mm -hmm. And you play poker? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you perked right up when that yeah, poker sure word came up. You, know that. you bet. <laughs> so now we know what he likes. But that, that's my... What only habit or I mean your your hobby kind hobby. of hobby yeah. 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 yeah yeah well and that's socializing you get it, with people and that's all very good oh gosh we have a great crew oh how many of them are there um probably up to fifteen that's wow cool. okay. Ah. okay yeah 
Are they all not in their 90s? Oh, no. I'm old. You're the oldest? Oh, old guy. You're old the guy. <laughs> <laughs> So they're, they're all retired. Yeah. Yeah, and they love poker. Yeah. So my dad loves bridge, and he gets together with all his friends. My dad's 87, mm -hmm. and he plays bridge. Oh, I, that. It's hard. I, I can't quite get it down, but he loves it. I used to like bridge when my wife was a wild life because she played bridge, but okay. I haven't played it lately. You know right. that most the younger people don't know bridge. Oh, probably. <laughs> and it's going to just fade away, I'm afraid. It's hard. It's actually a very deep thinking game. It's a fun game. It's a fun oh, game. We had many hours of bridge. Of doing that. Wow. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah, so, so poker. And how do you do? Do you play it well? Get by. <laughs> what are you saying over there? Eh, he gets by. He gets by. <laughs> he wins sometimes. Yes. Well, and um, it sounds like you enjoy your life. You... I, I certainly do. I don't want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I'm glad to hear that. that. Exactly. Well, I, I agree. I agree with you about that. <laughs> and so you guys stay right here, and we'll be right back. Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Hazlitt, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one -on -one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to lifesolutionscoachingandcounseling.com or email them at lifesolutions.com cc at yahoo.com this is a national health alert from the health care hotline are you on medicare and or have private insurance and suffer from back pain md topical has a solution for you today you can qualify to receive a pain relieving treatment such as a comfortable back brace or a customized pain treatment at little or no cost call md topical toll free now 888-998-7225 it just takes a couple of minutes to qualify for these amazing treatments that have helped thousands of people with severe pain. Your personalized pain treatment will be delivered directly to your door. Call MD Topical toll-free, 888-998-7225, 888-998-7225, or go to mdtopical.com and get started on your road to a pain-free life. Call MD Topical toll-free, 888 888-998-7225 998-7225 or go to mdtopical.com We've been fighting the war on drugs for a long time. We answer the phone 24-7, 365 days a year. On a busy night, we answer hundreds of calls. This war on drugs needs our intervention. Since 2014, Addiction Hope and Helpline has helped people struggling with drugs and alcohol. When the phone rings, 
We help people when they need it the most. When we get a caller into treatment, it feels good. It's a blessing. If you're struggling, drinking, using, and need to get clean, don't suffer alone in silence. Call Addiction Hope and Helpline. Our people understand, and many are also in recovery. Call for support and strength. You can call for someone who can't or isn't willing. It's an act of love. Together we can help you beat this thing and erase addiction from your vocabulary once and for all. Call 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. 800-854-1055. Are you taking Viagra and tired of paying $50 per tablet? Marley Drug has generic Viagra for just $10 per tablet. $10 per generic Viagra is a savings of $40 per dose. Call now and get free shipping on 10 tablets or more of generic Viagra. Marley Drug is a North Carolina pharmacy licensed in all 50 states. For information, go to MarleyGenerics.com or call us at 800-515-3062. That's 800-515-3062. Do you want to look 10 years younger? At Total Med Solutions, we have solutions to help you look and feel great. Try our Botox special with 20 units for only $173. Or replace your lip volume that you've lost over the years with a 1 milliliter syringe of Juvederm Dermal Filler for as little as $389. Do you want to lose 10, 20, even 100 pounds? Ask the experts at Total Med Solutions, where they provide physician-supervised prescription weight loss solutions for as little as $199 for a 30-day program. Are you tired of shaving? Come to Total Med Solutions, where you can get beach ready with laser hair removal starting at only $99 for six sessions. All laser hair procedures are done on the latest almost soprano ice machines that work great for all skin types. Call Total Med Solutions at 9 972-992-5040 to schedule your appointment. Consultations are always free. Just check it out. Again, that number is 972-992-5040. Hey, I'm Brant. So there's this guy named Jordan. He's a healthy guy. He's a dad of six, and he works as a guide in Alaska. And he goes to the doctor, true story, he goes to the doctor, and he's diagnosed with cancer stage four. And here's the thing. He had switched earlier from medical insurance to MediShare, where Christians share each other's medical bills. So the question for Jordan and his wife, Jenny, was, is this actually going to work? Our medical bills exceeded $160,000. MediShare members shared all our bills. And it was about more than just the money, too. This is a real community. MediShare is, is a family, a group of people that stick with you through the hardest times of your life. I just don't know how I could have done it without MediShare. It's so worth looking into. There's a reason this is growing so fast. So if you want to find out more, here is a number for you. 855-90-PSALM. That's 855-90-PSALM. With Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back. Well, and your your stepson lives here. Uh And and then you have Sandra and you have lots of friends. Yep. So how old is your stepson? Oh, he's in his 60s. Yes. How's his health? Pretty good. Pretty good. Is it as good as yours? Oh, no. yeah. No. You said no. Well, he, and, He's got bad knees. And... But you don't have bad knees. I've seen oh, you no. walking. You do no. fine. No. I'm doing great. <laughs> the, the only thing that so far I have found at all is that your vision has troubled you. And, um, but anything else? No, I have See? no aches, no pains, no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no teeth, that's right. One of the things, when we first walked in the door this morning and met you, um, you made us feel so welcome. Yes. And, uh, felt just right at home and you just, it was like, uh, like we'd known you for quite a while. I mean, you were so hospitable and warm, and Sandra as well, but I, 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 and I, I just want you to know how much we enjoyed getting to meet you. And part of that was just the fact that you welcomed us so warmly and you guys made us feel so much at home. And, and you just, I just, we appreciate you, Red, a well, lot. That's very good. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. Well, and you know, if your knees are good and your joints are good, it tells me that you eat a lot of good fat. You, <laughs> you don't want to be fat. But do you like the taste of having uh, butter? No. Do you eat butter? No. No, you don't eat butter. What's he eat? He eats just um, scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. You love eggs? Scrambled eggs. Yes. What else? Omelets. Omelets. You know, eggs are the best brain food there is. Pancakes. Oh. That, that, that's true. It, it is. And now yeah. people are beginning to say that. And, 
And if you eat a lot of eggs, boy, you're, you're liable to make it to 110. Who knows? You know? <laughs> and it has a lot of the stuff for joints yeah. and the yeah. brain because you think so well, you know. Does he like cream? No. No? No. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't meat. like Is that. Is he a protein? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. He eats a okay. lot of beef. A lot of like beef. From Arby's, you know, the, the Rubens. He eats... Um, you know, that's pretty much it. We, I mean, he likes baked potatoes. Yeah, baked potatoes. Baked potato. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what do you put on the baked potato? You don't put butter. everything. Oh yeah, so he puts butter on his baked potato. What do oh, you put yeah. on there? Salt, pepper, sour cream, sour cream. That's cream. Yeah. Okay. Everything on. A everything baked on there. See, right. I'm just trying to get a little hint of what it is, right? Um, that's helped you live so long. Do you take vitamins or supplements? Yes, lots of those. He takes a vitamin, and then. Uh, he takes a vitamin D3 yeah, um, once a day, mm-hmm. but very little other uh, prescription pills. Yeah, so that's really good. So a lot of supplements and some prescriptions. Mm-hmm. Um, so you do, do you go to the doctor that much? Uh-uh. See? Awesome. That's great. Good that's really, good really good. We're doing good. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. and um, it's so good to be here to celebrate your birthday. So what are you doing for your birthday? What are we doing? Nothing exciting. No, we are taking you out to eat at Dos Chili's. Dos Chili's. Dos so you're going to have you Mexican food? Guy? All right. So there's some Mexican food in there, too, that you like, right? And I know when you go out, people love to come up and say hi to you. Oh, we have a good with time. You. You're very social. Yeah, we have a good time. And we learned that you love Mexican music or Hispanic, the music. Yeah, right? the music. And, uh, and we know that you love chocolate. Yes, I do. Uh-huh. See, so I forgot about the chocolate because we yeah. eat a lot. Yeah. But brought you did... some Hershey's this we morning, so that was great. Yeah, Hershey's Kisses. We yeah. brought you some Hershey's. He lit up, didn't he? He, he loves did. chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys both for helping me out today. And well. it has been, hasn't it been great to do this, just sit and talk? Yeah. Loved I've loved it, and uh, we really, great. really have enjoyed it. It's brought back a lot of memories, too. That's good. You, I think you're an encouragement to people who hear you uh, read and, and, and kind of uh, look at your life the way you've shared it today. And uh, I don't encourage me just to get to meet you and know you, and, and um, others will feel the same way. Well, that makes me feel good. Good, good. You bet. Great to meet you. Same here. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Jim. Thank you very much for being here. Thank so you for pleasure, helping. Pleasure, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank and you guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week when we have Dominique Rhodes, the MVP. Super Bowl MVP. Super Bowl MVP that oh, played for several, the Colts. Several years back, yeah, yes. with the Colts. Oh. But, uh...